Imagine waking up one day and not being able to see. This is what happened to me. I will never forget the day I woke up and I couldn't see. It was like a veil came over my eyes and the room looked dark and blurry. I rubbed my eyes. I tried blinking and squinting and nothing changed. Then I remembered to put on my glasses, thinking that would probably help. Nothing. My world was still hazy. As a physician, the first thing I wanted to do was to figure out what was wrong and diagnose myself. I ran through a list of possible diagnoses in my head while trying to stay calm. Is this diabetes? Am I having a stroke? Could this be multiple sclerosis? Is this cancer? Or maybe I was too stressed and anxious from working those overnight shifts, and this is just a dream. I got up from my bed and realized this was not a dream. I really couldn't see. I was terrified. I went to see the optometrist right away, who could only tell me that my prescription increased threefold overnight. He gave me a new prescription and recommended I go see an eye specialist. I went to see the ophthalmologist, who did a thorough exam and ordered some labs. The results were inconclusive. He said, "Hmm, this is interesting," which is really code for, "I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Good luck with that." Now. That was not what I wanted to hear. I wanted a solution. I wanted to fix it so it would go away. I didn't care how it got fixed, as long as I could go back to normal. Not being able to see was making me desperate. I got a new pair of glasses so I could finally see again, but I was still confused with being a medical mystery. The patient in me was struggling. The physician in me was determined to get to the bottom of this. A few days later, I got my answer. I woke up, and my eyes were red and painful. I went to see the eye doctor right away, who diagnosed me with autoimmune uveitis, or inflammation of the eye, that can lead to full blindness. My diagnosis was. Boy, Koyanagi Harada disease, a subtype of autoimmune uveitis, with an incidence impacting 1.5 to 6 people per million in the U.S. The kind of rare disease you usually only see referenced in textbooks, and can't help but get intrigued to see that it happens in real life, until it happens to you. The evidence and inflammation was clear from the pictures of my eyes. The doctor said, "You need to start treatment right away with medications like steroids and immunosuppressants." I agreed. I wanted it to go away. I didn't care if it was a quick fix or not. In times of crisis and panic, the one thing you want is to be safe and survive. And that's how our brain is wired as humans. We're focused on survival and being comfortable. We want to feel that high that comes from feeling good and having a lot of energy. But depending on how we achieve this, it may or may not be good for us in the long run. Even though my eyes started to stabilize and recover with medications, I knew I wasn't cured. I went in for frequent follow-ups and got data and pictures confirming improvement, but saw. That the inflammation was still there. I knew that the quick fix is not a fix, and I wanted to get better and not have to take medications for the rest of my life if I could help it. Since I had a rare condition, there wasn't a lot of scientific research or data available to review. But I realized that if I wanted to truly recover. I needed to become my own advocate and to explore all the possibilities. So I started my journey. I decided to slow down 
and learned to listen to my body. Our body has its own intelligence. It talks to us. We need to pay attention to these messages. This means that when you feel something in your body, whether it be fatigue, aches, or pains, you can use this as information to make a decision about your self-care and health routines. Self-care is about taking care of and nourishing all parts of your mind and body so that you can feel and be your best. Instead of drinking that third cup of coffee to stay alert or pushing through the pain, what if you took a moment and asked yourself, what does my body need? And then listen. See what comes up and experiment to see what feels most energizing to you. This is a skill and practice that gets easier the more you do it, and it's accessible to everyone. Wellness is not just being free of disease or illness. It's a state and practice of integrating physical, mental, and emotional well-being to experience inner peace and ease. And what if there are many options available for you to feel so much better and attain wellness? When I first learned about the field of integrative medicine, I was excited because it made so much sense. Some of you may be familiar with integrative medicine, but if you're not, think of it this way. It's a field of medicine that incorporates many modalities on this path to wellness. I'm simplifying this, but we have Western medicine, of course, which uses surgical procedures and pharmaceuticals primarily. Then there's Eastern medicine, for example, Chinese medicine that uses acupuncture needles as a way to stimulate various organ systems to help support the body. Then there's Ayurvedic medicine, a medical system from India, which uses many herbs and lifestyle practices to help rebalance the body. And there are many additional modalities focused on enhancing this mind-body connection, such as mindfulness, breathwork to nutrition, and much more. As you can see, we're not limited to only one way of treating a patient. Integrative medicine is about blending the best of all worlds, from Western to Eastern, traditional to complementary and alternative medicine, also known as CAM in the medical community, giving you options to attain your best state of health. Many people have polarized views about medicine. On one hand, there are people who only believe in Western medicine and disregard all other modalities. On the other hand, there are people who only believe in alternative therapies and dismiss Western medicine. But what if we don't need to choose? What if we can incorporate various modalities and take the best of all worlds? We simply have more resources in our toolbox. Everyone and every body is different. So the things you need are different. And by taking an integrative approach to wellness, you can work with practitioners from various modalities who can prescribe personalized treatments that will work best for you. In becoming my own best health advocate, I gave myself permission to assemble a team of integrated practitioners who truly listened. Professionals who are focused on treating the root cause and not just putting a Band-Aid on a symptom because Band-Aids are quick fixes. And it's not that I'm against Band-Aids or medications. In acute, urgent situations, Band-Aids are necessary. I used one. And please don't stop taking your medications or flush the pills down the toilet without consulting your health professional. <laughs> but in addition to Band-Aids, what if we were open to exploring permanent solutions so that you don't have to keep reaching for the quick fixes? Because the quick fix is not a fix. As a physician, I've seen many patients self-identify or define themselves by their diseases. For example, someone may say, 
I'm a diabetic. I'm a cancer survivor. Or, I'm so OCD. <laughs> Even though they probably don't have OCD. You can see how there are certain assumptions and beliefs that come with these identities that may or may not be helpful. So what if you stopped limiting yourself by disease? Let's take diabetes, a global epidemic that impacts 537 million adults in the world, according to the International Diabetes Federation. This means over half a billion people have elevated blood sugar or glucose levels, and we often see diabetes as a chronic illness. Now, I've treated many patients with the latest glucose-lowering medications, but I also have patients who no longer have diabetes. These are people who believed it was possible to get better. They looked at the underlying problem and were open to incorporating various therapies and lifestyle changes, whether it be an anti-inflammatory diet or a mind-body exercise like Tai Chi to lower the stress and inflammation on the body. Or let's talk about mental health. What about anxiety? Raise your hand if you felt anxious this past week, the past month, or what about the past two years? <laughs> I mean, who isn't feeling more anxious, especially given the world we're living in right now? Did you know that in 2019, according to the World Health Organization, 970 million, almost a billion people, live with a mental health disorder? with anxiety disorders being the most common. And this was before the pandemic. When you're anxious, you can't focus. Your mind is all over the place. And this creates a state of panic, which activates the body's fight or flight response and results in mental and physical experiences of stress. You might notice symptoms such as pain, nausea, irritability, poor sleep, and more, all related to anxiety and stress. And yes, while it's important to rule out possible medical conditions that can mimic anxiety, such as a thyroid condition or a skipped heartbeat, there are many other ways to help manage anxiety. Why don't we do a short visualization exercise now to see if you can be more focused, energized, and at peace. This is a safe space so I invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable. Sit up straight, have both feet flat on the ground, and take a few deep breaths at your own pace. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth, releasing any stress or tension you're holding on to. Keeping your eyes closed, imagine you're doing something you truly enjoy, whatever it is, a particular sport or activity. Think of something that requires some effort, but energizes you. See yourself doing this activity and bring your body and senses into the experience. What do you see around you? Do you hear any sounds? Are there any smells? What are you wearing? What's the temperature? How does your body feel? Visualize and see yourself enjoying this activity that you love so much. Maybe you feel more open, expansive, happier. Now take another deep breath, inhaling, enjoying this moment, and then exhaling, bring your attention back into the room, and you can open your eyes. Are you feeling better? Raise your hand if you're feeling better. You see, it only took a minute. And imagine how good it would feel if you did this every single day. Maybe you love skiing and you can't go out and ski every day, but you can do the simple visualization to make you feel like you are out there skiing. And of course, there are many other methods to help decrease anxiety, such as yoga or meditation, to help you stay calm in any situation. Now, there's also the C word, cancer. 
as one of the leading causes of death. We've poured a ton of money and research into preventing and treating cancer. An area to explore is the field of epigenetics, or the study of how your behaviors and environment can impact the way your genes and DNA work. What this means is that you can turn certain genes on or off, or adjust the volume up or down based on your decisions and lifestyle, giving you a lot more control over your health than ever before. We can take a personalized approach to medicine and medical treatment. So the point is this, you have options. It's not one size fits all, and it's not either or. It's yes and. What this means is that you can take the medications when needed and also incorporate other modalities to help expedite recovery and promote health. While the quick fix is sometimes necessary, especially in acute situations, it's not enough for long-term sustained wellness. It's as if we spray water on a plant's yellowing leaves instead of nurturing the dry soil to truly revive the plant for good. From now on, going forward, take a look at your healthcare and wellness routines. I invite you to be open about how you approach your health and well-being. I want you to know that there are many options available for you to feel so much better. For me, I'm grateful to share that through incorporating Western, Eastern, traditional, and complementary modalities, my eyes have healed and I'm no longer taking those medications. But what works for me is not necessarily what will work for you because we're all unique, built with our own individual blueprints. If you already have treatments that are working for you, great, you don't have to change it. If it's not broken, why fix it? But if you have health challenges that have been resistant to the treatments you've tried so far, remember, the quick fix is not a fix. This is an invitation to explore Become your own advocate, and don't quit until you find what works for you.